right, hang on just a minute, guys. All right, I'm going to record this because there's some folks that wanted to get this information and couldn't make this exact time. So I'm going to blaze through this as fast as I can for your guys' benefit. This is, today is April 2nd, and what I'm going to share with you is all the current information I have about the small SBA Paycheck Protection Program. That is one program that is part of the CARES Act giant $2 trillion stimulus package that came down just a couple days ago. This is one piece of it, the payroll protection program. Um, for those of you who don't know me, there's a lot of people who are here who don't know me personally. My name is Francisco Cervant. I am the founder and managing attorney at Keystone Law Firm. We are a estate planning asset protection uh, firm in Chandler, Arizona. Uh, and we are just digging into this because we have a lot of business clients. I do not put myself out there as an SBA loan expert, but because we have a lot of business clients that are really concerned about this right now, I basically spent the last week just reading the, the bill that was passed, uh, reading SBA programs, talking with uh, CEOs, presidents, uh, senior lending uh, vice presidents at bank, I mean, I've, I've been digging into my entire network to be able to get the right and most up-to-date information for you guys. And so that's, I mean, it's Thursday, it's 2 o'clock. This program is set to supposedly begin tomorrow. I have some news about that. And this is not a, um, this is, I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass. So let me just start you guys off with what this program is and then what it is not, okay? This particular program is a loan to start with, but it is absolutely and 100% set up to be forgiven eight weeks from now or eight weeks from after you get, when you get funded. That's why the federal government had to fund this thing, okay? It starts off as a, as a loan and eight weeks later, if you've proven that you've done what you're supposed to do, then you can get it forgiven. So, and, and the amount that's forgiven is not taxable income to your business. You will not declare it as a piece of revenue. Okay, so let's, let, me, let me just start you off there. There is another program that I'm not gonna talk about, but I want you to know that exists. This one's been around for a long time. This is the emergency disaster relief loans, okay? Those are something different. It is not, there's no forgiveness under that emergency disaster relief program or loan program. It's, it's a loan, it's a straight up loan. You borrow it to get yourself through a crunch and you pay it back. So that's something totally different. We're not gonna talk about that today. We're gonna be talking about the, the specific payroll protection program. Now, uh, 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 we, we were lucky enough to have another colleague of mine um, step up who actually cares about his clients and his contacts, I think as much as I do, the way, um, the way we dug into this topic. And, um, and as we were, were brainstorming around these, this whole SBA payroll protection loan idea, he said, can I please get this information from my clients? And so I just really want to give a huge thank you to Fernando Marquez. Uh, you have done an amazing job of really stepping up for your people and making sure that they get taken care of. Your whole network, the, all, all the, the companies that you support, um, because, right, I mean, if any of these, you know, if the people that we work closely with, if they go under, we know that affects us. So our best efforts right now is to help the people that we are doing business with. So good job for you. Keep doing it. Keep taking care of our people. Keep taking care of your people. Um, so let's dig in. All right. Like I said, we're Thursday. It's 2 p.m. This program, according to the regulations, is supposed to start tomorrow at uh, on April 3rd. So as of 8 uh, 8.35 a.m. Uh, uh, Eastern Time, so 5.35 Pacific Time this morning, uh, I can't name names, uh, not just uh, not at liberty to say, but 
one of the um, one of the direct SBA lenders, the CEO of that company, he reported that. So uh, he reported that his conversations with SBA and the Treasury Department as of this morning, literally this morning, so it's 2 p.m., I don't have an update after that, but as of this morning, they don't have everything ready to go tomorrow, okay? That's the first thing I want to make sure all of you guys know. The SBA and the Treasury Department do not have everything ready to go tomorrow. Even if they supposedly get the applications up, and if your banks accept them, the SBA isn't even ready to tell you what to do. Okay, they're not ready to tell the banks what to do. Now, the SBA, there are only 13 direct lenders in the country that work directly with SBA that are SBA direct lenders. This CEO is the CEO of one of those direct lenders, and basically, I, I, this is how much I trust this, this guy is the SBA and the Treasury Department are basically asking him how should we roll this thing out because that's all they do. They do 100% SBA lending. So they're literally building it out as we fly. Um, the, the final regulations are supposed to come down tomorrow. Good. That will tell us, that will tell you, that will tell the banks exactly what are the requirements for the application, okay? So if anybody out there starts telling you, I've got all the answers, I know exactly how this is going to work, fill out this, it's exactly the right thing, their, their integrity, like I, I wonder really how much integrity they have. The, the reality is the answers are not known yet, okay? And that's going to go, that's going to affect everybody across the country, 100%. So every small business that is going to be like clamoring to get on this bandwagon and get their piece of this pie, if nobody can do it, nobody can do it. So if it goes to the weekend, it goes to the weekend, and we'll be we'll be hoping things can start up Monday. So um, one of the things that I've been just pounding, 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 pounding with everybody that I talk to about this and about everything else that we're doing is we've got to approach this stuff with a level head. We cannot be like running around with our hair on fire. So if the application isn't ready tomorrow, my advice is don't be jumping on somebody's bandwagon and throwing them all your documents. Because here's the reality. Like I said, this program is a, is a loan that's intended to be forgiven. The whole purpose is to forgive it. If you get your loan in and you get the money, you get funded on this thing, eight weeks later, you've got to go through another application to get that forgiven. If you did this wrong and your documentation sucked and it just wasn't calculated correctly and you got your funding and then you spend all the money and you get down eight weeks later and you can't you can't either get it forgiven because you, you just something wasn't done right or it's a giant pain in the butt how much of your life is going to get wasted dealing with that. So I absolutely recommend that you take a, a moment, okay? There's $350 billion here. I know that can go quickly across all small businesses, but I, I truly believe in my heart of hearts that the level-headed, appropriate response for us business owners is to not be reactionary, especially in these crazy times, because what we don't want to do is to pop our head up eight weeks later as our after this has all, the dust has all settled, and everybody else is kind of chugging along, picking back up, and we're being strangled by this SBA thing that we did completely wrong. We don't want the pain to continue. So, so Get your stuff ready, but be, you know, file the application when you know exactly what the regulations are. Okay, so they're supposed to come down tomorrow. I've heard from um, two of my very, very trusted sources that um, one said tomorrow and the other one said tomorrow afternoon. So my guess is realistically none of these banks are going to be ready to accept applications by, by close of business tomorrow, that we're going to be 
basically just gathering the final regulations tomorrow. They're going to be able to get all their systems built over the weekend, and then Monday is when we're really probably going to hit the, hit the races. So, so here's how this program works. If you have a business, and right now the requirement for business is pretty low, okay? It's a very fluid and open definition. Really, honestly, it is, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad they did that. They've been very clear that that is a vague and intentionally broad definition, okay? You don't have to have a formal business entity. You don't have to have an LLC. You don't have to have an S Corp. You don't have to have a C Corp, nothing. You can be a sole proprietor. I was mowing lawns, and now I can't mow lawns, or I was whatever, okay? If you were a sole proprietor, you will qualify under certain um, criteria for this particular program. So the the the... I'm going to send you guys a couple files, anybody who wants them. Actually, we'll post them to our website. Um, the, um, okay, so here's the requirements. Who can apply? Starting tomorrow, it's for businesses, okay, and sole proprietors. Um, starting the next Friday, April 10th, it's for independent contractors and self-employed people. So even independent contractors and self-employed, you'll be able to start the next Friday. Okay, that's when all the regulations will be done and existing out there. And this applies to all businesses, even nonprofits, um, where's the list? Veterans organizations, tribal businesses, um, they, all, all businesses can apply. There are some restrictions if you have more than 500 employees. So there's some very special categories and, and the rules are different if you have more than 500 employees. So, you know, you have to analyze that. Um, in order, what this whole thing is based on is trying to keep your payroll funded. So in order to keep your payroll funded, they need to know how much your payroll is. Your payroll, I, I, I'm in debates with some lawyers on this right now, and I, I think there's, there's going to be two groups of people, how they come down. I think some lawyers are actually going to come down with a, a definition of payroll that I believe is going to be damaging and harmful to their clients. What I believe that the, what it looks like the law, the actual laws, the statutes, the, the act that was passed, the definition of payroll is going to include the um, actual payroll cost you have for people you pay employment taxes on, including salary, wages, commissions, and tips, okay? It's also going to include, so you, you add those things up, salary, wages, commissions, and tips, then it's going to include employee benefits, okay? So whatever your costs are, the cost to the business, your costs are for vacation, uh, family, medical, parental, sick leave, that kind of stuff. If you've had any um, separation or dismissal charges, payments required for group health care benefits, so your, your business insurance premium side, and retirement benefits. So, you know, it's not just the employee's you know, hourly wage or annual salary, right? It's also those benefits, those health insurance premiums and your retirement contribution, what your match is. Okay, so those things are included. Then on top of that, you get to include your state and local taxes if you pay any on payroll. And all of that gets added up. Okay, now, well, what month, right? Well, what time period do I add that up? What they want is they want to know what one month is, and you can, the regulations will better define this, I hope, but what it's supposed to be is that, um, or what the, the law says is that the average of the last 12 months. So you want to be looking at that, the average of the last 12 months. If you're a seasonal business, there's some allowance for you to kind of pick your season. Um, so look at the average for the last 12 months. What is your monthly total payroll cost? All those things I just outlined. And then you take that number and you multiply it times two and a half. So if you have total there of $100,000, then your payroll protection loan will be $250,000, okay? So all of that times two and a half. Now, the maximum loan size is $10 million. They are not approving any loans on top of that. And then the forgiveness process is going to happen eight weeks later. And there's going to be a separate application for that where you provide additional documentation about how you use the expenses. 
Essentially, you want to be using it on those same things, those payroll expenses, but you can also use it on eligible mortgage interest, rent, utility payments, okay? Um, and mortgage, rent, utility obligations. So if you've used it on the payroll costs plus mortgage interest, rent, and utilities, if you use it on those things, then it sh you should be able to get all of it forgiven, but you're going to have to document in that uh, application all of those expenses. Um, the SBA is also saying that uh, if you don't, whatever amount you don't use towards those things, it's just going to convert automatically to a two-year, so I've, seen, I've seen on the SBA's info, I've seen conflicting information, but the one I'm going to tell you about is that it's a two-year loan, but it's only with a half of a percent interest rate. That's the best information I can find right now. Um, no collateral, no personal guarantee, no credit check. Um, from everything we see, there's no underwriting. You just provide the information, provide the certifications on the application, and the bank, assert, the, the bank is who does the evaluation if you satisfy all of that. If they do, then they can fund your loan. Um, now, one of the things that um, I want to make sure everyone, okay, a couple more things here. Uh, okay. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. What do you need to have for the application? Uh, the application, there's a sample application that the SBA has put out already. It is probably one of the simplest applications that, you know, for a federal program I've ever seen. Um, essentially, it's one page with a second page of, of initials, you know, you initial a bunch of things and signatures. So it's one page. And what it requires is your business name, your business address, um, your, your tax ID number or your social security number, phone number, email, that stuff. Then it has just a line for your monthly payroll amount, which is going to be all those costs I just identified, two and a half times that. And then you also have to certify how many jobs you employ, okay? How many people you employ in that payroll because those are the two things that are going to determine uh, if also if you get a different type of reduction if in your forgiveness. Let me say that another way. Those are the two things that can affect how much is forgiven for you. So if you get eight weeks down the road and you've fired half of your staff or you've cut your payroll, you've, you've essentially reduced everyone's pay by half, then the way the program reads, the way I'm interpreting it right now, is that your forgiveness is half, okay? So they essentially want you to keep everybody employed in order to get the maximum forgiveness. Keep them employed and keep their pay the same scale it has been. Um, you've got to have a list on the application of all the owners of your entity, and if you have multiple entities out there, then you can do this for each one, okay? You do it for your, um, for your, you know, your, uh, I don't know, what would be an example? Your, your, um, your plumbing company, and then you also have a separate entity that owns all your work trucks, right? You can do it for both. And what, whatever the payroll is for your work truck asset company, that's what the loan it can get. And whatever the payroll is for your plumbing service company, that's the payroll loan it can get. Okay, so, you're, so on your application, you're going to list ownership of any um, more than 20% owners, um, and then you've got to make some certifications, and, and they're pretty, I mean, I guess they're pretty standard. Um, you've got to certify that you haven't been um, basically involved in any kind of major, um, ba any bankruptcy, um, or you haven't been kicked out of federal, uh, uh, what are they called, uh, uh, participation in federal bankruptcy programs. Um, or have you guaranteed any other SBA loans in the past seven years that are delinquent, right? They're, this is going to be a no. Um, let's see, if you are, you have to list some affiliate. Uh, if you have, if you're applying for multiples, you got to just let them know what the, what the relationship is between the different entities. Um, and then the other program that I'm not going to talk about, the um, IDLE, the Emergency Disaster Loans, you can't get both at the same time. So the way these SBA programs work is you can only get one at a time. So if you've gotten the emergency disaster relief loan already this year, then you can't get this one also, 
though they're, they're, I'm expecting the regulations to say you're going to be able to convert some of that emergency disaster relief to the payroll protection program. So we're going to be looking for those regulations and the process for how to do that. Um, but you can't get both at the same time. So, you know, if you're already under that one, then you're going to have to figure out how to make a conversion when those regulations come out. Fifth certification is you're going to have to say that, um, you guys have been quiet. I haven't had to mute you. Thank you. Uh, have you been indicted for criminal um, uh, uh, criminal fraud charges, basically, or are you on probation or parole? Any misdemeanor crimes or uh, against a minor? Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, you have to certify you're either a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident status. You represent that, and then you have to make a whole bunch of sort of promises that are true statements. This is a federal program, so you can't commit fraud on these things because then they can go after you and put you in jail. Um, you've read this stuff, you'll comply with regulations, proceeds will be used as specified. Um, to the extent feasible, you will only purchase American-made equipment and products, go USA. Um, you're not engaged in any illegal activities. And then each owner of the entity that has more than 20% has to make these next certifications that you believe that the current economic environment causes you to have uncertainty with your ongoing operations, who doesn't, um, that the funds will be used for these things you can provide documentation for these things, that the forgiveness will be based on exactly what we just talked about. Um, you will not double dip and have uh, another SBA loan program for the same business entity. Um, the imprisonment and fine and false, you know, false information act and that they can share information with the IRS. So, um, so that's the application. It's really, I mean, you could, that's the sample application, I should say. You could fill that out in just a few minutes. Um, okay, so what do you need to prepare for as far as documentation? Um, we don't know. The reality is we don't know what the final requirements are going to be. That's what we're expecting is going to come down tomorrow is some actual regulations to the bank to say, here's what the loan needs to request. Here's the information that needs to be provided. Here's the process for submitting it to the SBA here, right? We're expecting all that tomorrow. Okay, so here is the list of things that we expect you'll be able to need. So go ahead and get these things ready for sure. Okay, your payroll tax forms. Um, if you have payroll, like regular payroll, not payments to independent contractors, but payroll payroll, you have a 941. You've been filing 941s. That's your payroll tax return every quarter. You'll want those. I would I would go ahead and grab them for the last four quarters. Okay, like if you can grab 2019 and then grab Q1 if you if that one's already done. Um, I forget when our accountant files those, but uh, if you can get Q1 of 2020, get all of those together. Okay, you will want to make sure that's got a breakdown of, of, of payroll by employee because the amount of payroll wages that you add up and accumulate is capped at 100,000 per employee. So if you have, you know, employees making $200,000, only the first 100 counts as a payroll cost. Um, um, and then your 2019 tax returns, go ahead and, for the business entity, go ahead and set those aside, go ahead and grab those, um, let me grab my other note on this. I know you guys were expecting me to be so beautifully organized, and of course, I'm sure I'm sure I should be, but we just want information. So my second list is over here. Hang on just a second. Okay, um, and then... I would get your um, 2019 P&Ls and your balance sheet, so your financial statements for 2019. I would tuck those in that same file because we just we don't know, right? That then that's usually an easy thing for them to ask for, easy thing for you to provide. So okay, so just to recap, your list should include your 941s, your payroll tax returns for the last for 2019 and for the first quarter of this year. I would go ahead and get your 2019 uh, tax returns for the business. If you don't have those filed yet, get your 2018, 2018s on hand and your 2019 
financial statements for the business, profit, profit loss and balance sheet. Okay. So, okay. Now the, the, the side note to this whole thing is, I shouldn't say the side note, it's where I started and it's probably where I'm going to end up. Um, that's kind of, I mean, that's, that's all the information I have, but my recommendation again, is that you do not, do not rush to file an application unless you know the lender that you're applying with has all of the regulations and everything and they are done and ready to go. Uh, there, so because of our relationships, uh, one of our, uh, uh, John Dahl is a business attorney with our firm. He's got just amazing relationships with a lot of the local uh, banks and I've been reaching out to my uh, relationships as well. We are this close to scratching, um, or we're scratching and we're this close to getting a really solid answer on this for our clients on how you can apply. We will act as your agent. The thing that's really neat about that, it doesn't cost you anything. You just get our help and our guidance and our advice as attorneys. I mean, we can, holy cow, we can brainstorm this thing um, and really dial it in. So um, the SBA is going to be covering those fees. If you want to use us as your agent, that's where you would jump on uh, our website. We've got, or I should say, I'll, put, I'll post it here in the, um, in the chat box, um, and you guys can jump on. This is a, we just, we personally created a quick, mm, that's the wrong thing. We created a quick Google form. That way you guys could, let us know if this is something you want our help with. And that is now in the chat box there. So you can go straight to there. It's just a quick like pre, not application, but hey, yes, we want, we want you guys to help us. Let us know when the application is really ready. And then when it's ready, submit our application for us. We'll have to have a phone call. We'll have to get your documents from you. Uh, thankfully, everything you communicate with us is completely attorney-client privileged and confidential, so it stays there, stays with the firm. Um, and but we will the the, stri the strategy that we will give you is how to maximize what you ask for, knowing what you'll be able to get forgiven. Okay, there's some strategies here, and. You may even be able to ask for this much knowing we're only going to get this much forgiven, but maybe that's okay because a two year half percent loan might be the cheapest money we can get anywhere. Um, so anyway, there's some, there's some business strategy there that we can counsel you through and help you figure out what the best amount is uh, to set up for and, and request in your application. Um, so jump on that link and get in line. We've already got a ton of clients that are lined up in there. We, we are going to do our best to get everybody help and make sure that you get the most that you can. Um, the other link that I'm going to give everybody, which I believe will be the place to get the most up-to-date information, is that second link I just put in there for the Treasury Department, okay? They're the money bag, right? So they're not going to let anything happen until they know it's all lined up and ready. So I would follow the Treasury Department's website there for the status of these things. Um, we may be able to actually line up an arrangement with a bank, uh, this, per this one particular uh, direct SBA lender. Um, we're very close to maybe being able to have a relationship where we can just backdoor these things in for you guys. And if, if we can get this locked and loaded, uh, I don't know if it's going to be over overnight by tomorrow or over the weekend. Uh, my expectation is that will probably be the best place for you to get in quickly, correctly, so that when you go to get out quickly, you get out fast and you're not dragged through a giant mess. Um, so anyway, so that's what we're looking for. I will keep everybody up to date. I will be sending out a couple more emails about this to specifically you guys who came here um, and anybody who jumps on our uh, Google form to get in line for our help with that. Any questions, please just fill out the form so that we can communicate with you one-on-one -on -one and happy to do that by email. Once you get in there, we can correspond by email, and um, we're happy to help you guys. 
Uh, thanks again to John Dahl, I appreciate your help with all this, and Fernando Marquez for uh, getting your tribe this information. I'm really glad this was uh, helpful for you. Uh, anything else, feel free to reach out to Keystone. And we are, we are busy. We're happy to be here. And thanks for joining, everybody.